a lot of people listening to this for the first time, they're going to say, you know, come on, it's, it's on the market, it's legal. Talk about how this first got approved and about the testing procedure to get this stuff approved. Well, the White House told the FDA to promote biotechnology. So the FDA created a new position at the agency for Michael Taylor to be in charge of policy for the agency so that he would be in charge of the GMO policy. Michael Taylor was Monsanto's former attorney. So the FDA officially grants Monsanto, who told us that Agent Orange, PCBs, and DDT were safe, the complete right to determine on its own whether their own GMOs are safe. And Monsanto does not have to even talk to the FDA or tell consumers that the foods are on the market. In fact, the agency scientists said over and over again as a consensus that GMOs were not only different but dangerous and they could lead to allergies, toxins, new diseases, and nutritional problems. They urged their superiors to require testing and were ignored. Unfortunately, when a scientist speaks out against GMOs or finds incriminating evidence, they're attacked with a global coordinated uh, system that's been well established. And this has been reported in Nature. When Seralini discovered the problem, the, you could hear the same group of scientists that have been attacking independent scientists for years say the same points. In other words, they circulated the talking points. Everyone repeated the same thing. And so it's suppressed coverage by the papers. Because when everyone says the same thing, planted in all these different countries and continents that all work directly or indirectly with the biotech industry, then they get to say there's a consensus. When the American Academy of Environmental Medicine looked at the animal feeding studies in 2009, they saw gastrointestinal problems, immune problems, reproductive problems, organ damage, dysfunctional regulation of cholesterol and insulin, and an accelerated aging process. And they said this indicates real significant problems on a causal basis, not just a casual basis. Therefore, all physicians should prescribe non-GMO diets to every patient. If the Bt toxin pokes holes in human cells, it might cause irritation, and that could relate to some of these uh, gastrointestinal disorders. The Bt toxin in its natural form has also been shown to damage the microvilli. If it pokes holes in human cells and causes transport of stuff that's in the stomach into the bloodstream, like it does with insects, then you end up with permeable gut, which is linked to autoimmune disease, inflammation, food allergies. It's also linked to autism, cancer, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, according to statistics. And it presents um, undigested food proteins into the bloodstream that causes an immune reaction. There can be molecular mimicry, which then it can cause autoimmune disease, etc. Then we have a competing toxin, Roundup, active ingredient glyphosate, endocrine disruptor, kills off beneficial gut bacteria, damages the microvilli as well, suppresses digestive enzymes, can cause negative gut bacteria overgrowth, and chelates minerals, making them unavailable. The rest of this interview, plus much more, is available in the Natural News Inner Circle. Join us today.